Well, good morning, everybody, and good to be on with you today. Uh, today uh, is Monday, and Monday, March the 6th, and I uh, hope you had a good weekend uh, and looking forward to a wonderful week. It's a little, uh, little foggy out this morning. It's going to be uh, fairly warm today here in Florida. Uh, and I heard in uh, saw in Michigan supposed to get some more snow today, uh, but I uh, hope uh, hope uh, you're doing well in the snow there in Michigan. And we uh, look forward we look forward to being back uh, back with our church family uh, this week uh, uh, towards the end of the week. And we can't wait to be back in church Sunday. And miss you all, and hope you all are well uh, in Michigan. We had a great time in church yesterday. It was great to worship the Lord, great to be challenged in the Word of God, and uh, great to see uh, people moving in the, or God moving in the hearts of His people. And trust wherever it is that you're watching from, trust that uh, your services Sunday were excellent as well. Let me encourage you, if you're just now jumping on, hit that share button uh, so that others can jump on as well and they can be a part of the uh, power up. So touch that share button really quick here before we get into the book of Job, all right? Job chapter number 33, once again, uh, we're going to begin reading in verse number 25. We've noted uh, here in the early parts of this chapter, uh, we've noted uh, the power of God. We noted who he was, or not who he was, but who he is, uh, how God speaks to mankind, how God loves mankind, how God sent his son Jesus. Uh, we noted that even uh, our last time together. Uh, how God sent Jesus to uh, to this earth to redeem us. Uh, we also note that, that life, as we as we live life, uh, that uh, life is uh, can be filled with pain. It can be filled with suffering. Uh, and as we've read through the book of Job and gone through this, we've noted that Job experienced. Uh, uh, pain and suffering, and as we consider Job, his testimony, he was perfect, he was upright, he feared God, he eschewed evil, and yet he still went through uh, this trial, this time of pain and suffering. Uh, and so we're going to see here in the next couple of verses here in Job chapter 33, uh, we note that uh, as we consider the life that we live, we note uh, how our response to suffering uh, makes a world of difference uh, in our life, in our spirit, and just in our overall experience uh, with life. And so let's note this, all right? Job 33 and verse 25. Now, this is the response that one ought to have to suffering, or, or this is what happens, I guess, uh, to those who, who uh, respond well. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. And wouldn't that be appealing for Job right now as he goes through these, has these boils and all that, to, to have a flesh that returns fresher than a child's and, uh, and as he goes back to the days of his youth. Uh, uh, we know this, even as we get older, uh, we know the, uh, uh, our bodies change. Our bodies obviously get older and they don't bounce back as quick. And uh, they, we, uh, we even, uh, uh, it hurts sometimes even just getting out of bed in the morning and those types of things uh, because our bodies do get older. We do lose our coordination. We lose we lose our strength and so on. That's just a result of life. The other day, uh, we had the kids at the pool. I was just jumping in the pool and uh, uh, slipped a little bit. Thankfully, I slipped right into the pool. But, uh, you know, the kids, uh, they, they run and jump and all that kind of stuff. And uh, as we get older, uh, we experience those ty types of things. And so uh, El uh, Elihu here stating to Job, hey, uh, you go through suffering, you respond right in suffering, here's the reward. And this would be very appealing to Job knowing what he's going through. Verse 26, he shall pray unto God and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. Uh, and so uh, Elihu now saying, hey, even the, in regards to answered prayer, in regards to God strengthening his people as they go through these times of suffering, times of pain. Uh, you know, kind of uh, three, three uh, individuals come to mind when, when we think of this. Obviously, Job. Job and his situation. You think, 
Job cried out to the Lord in his pain, in his suffering, and in his sorrow. Uh, we know this, that God didn't just, God didn't take away the trial uh, the first time that Job uh, sought for God to answer his prayer. Reminds me of, you think, <clears throat> think of the children of Israel who were in slavery in Egypt uh, for well over 400 years, 450 years. They were, they were in Egypt uh, and they prayed and asked God to deliver them uh, from their oppression. And God, God didn't, uh, didn't uh, release them from that oppression the first time they answered that prayer. I think of uh, the Apostle Paul, who sought the Lord three times uh, about his thorn in the flesh. And God, God answered and said, you know what? My strength is sufficient for thee. Uh, hey, I'll take care of you. I'll make sure that you can handle it. Just trust me. Uh, and we consider these individuals, and there's many others in Scripture. I think of uh, think of Jonah once he started getting right with with the Lord, and and as he was in the belly of that that great fish, uh, he was there for three days praying. Uh, and so let me encourage you, and just like kind of a lie he was saying here, pray unto God, and He'll be favorable unto Him. When we pray to God, that does not mean that all of our Trials, all of our difficulty, all of our pain, all of our hurt will go away. What it means is that God will strengthen us. God will provide for us. He will make sure that His grace is sufficient for us. Uh, and that is a that's a great truth for us to know and understand, uh, and and just to realize in regards to prayer. Many times God answers in the here and in the now. Sometimes. And, and, and we've got to understand this too, that, that God knows what's best for us. Uh, and, and as we go to him in prayer for our trials, for our times of sorrow, uh, we've, got to, we've got to just trust him in the moment. And if God says, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to take you completely out of the trial, but you know what? I'm going to walk with you through the trial. Uh, and he's teaching a dependence upon him. He's teaching a trust and a faith that we need to grow in. Uh, and, and a recognition of God's strength. We know verse 27, he looketh upon men. And if any man say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right and a prophet of me not, okay, so what is this? A repentance of sin. He will deliver his soul from going into the pit and his life shall see the light. We see here forgiveness of sin. Uh, we see the right response to pain and suffering is repentance of wrong. Uh, if there is any wrong, we know that God is going to forgive. Um, just a, a thought for us as we consider probably a, one of the more familiar verses here for the believer. But of 1 John chapter 1 uh, and verse number 9, the Bible says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness we see that that word of condition that word if uh, if we want to be cleansed of forgiven of our sins we want to see God God faithful in cleansing us from his sins we must confess I find in my life uh, and maybe doing yours too I find that pride keeps me from confessing my sin oftentimes admitting that I was wrong uh, and uh, and we we forfeit the forgiveness of God when we do not seek uh, we forfeit the forgiveness when we do not seek to confess our sin. Uh, and so I want to encourage you today. Uh, Elihu brings up a good point here: confess your sin, God will deliver uh, deliver us. Uh, and what a powerful truth that is. <laughs> And now verse number 29, Lo, all these things worketh God, oftentimes with man. And so we see that God, God is in the forgiving business to bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of living. Think about this, and, and, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but you think about where, you, where you've come from, believer. Uh, you were doomed uh, to spend an eternity in the lake of fire, uh, separated from God. And God says, for whoso, in Romans, he says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, and, and 
as believers, we recognize, man, we want to be saved from the separation from God. And so we call upon the Lord. Uh, we know that the Apostle Paul put it this way, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, and that is our ticket. That is our path uh, away from separation from God and into heaven is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and just a, a thought for you. Uh, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should what? Come to repentance. That word repent means a turning around, doing a 180, uh, going from uh, eternal destruction to eternal life. It's a 180. Uh, recognizing that we are a sinner, turning to Christ, 180. Verse number 31 says this, uh, Elihu speaking Job, Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me, hold thy peace and I will speak. If thou hast anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee wisdom. Uh, where has that humility gone? Uh, Elijah says, Job, you're going to keep talking. Hold your peace. Listen to me. I've got a lot to say. You know what? If you want to answer me, if you want to stand up for yourself, hey, hey, go ahead. Uh, I desire to justify thee. And then verse 31, <clears throat> listen to me, don't talk. Hold, was it? Hold that peace, don't talk. I shall teach you wisdom. Hey, I've got this Job, just trust me. And so we kind of see the pride of Elihu uh, coming out here uh, as he's addressing Job. And so uh, we're gonna end there. We'll uh, pick up in chapter 34 tomorrow uh, and uh, hope that you have a great day today. Hope you had a good day in church yesterday. Uh, and uh, hope uh, uh, we're praying for our church, Calvary Baptist Church, and uh, those that are uh, filling in the gaps uh, over the over the, the this time that I'm away. And so thankful for them, and thankful that the ministry continues. Trust that uh, trust that you had a good day in church yesterday. We had a great day here, uh, worshiping the Lord, and we look forward to when we can worship the Lord with you again in the very near near future. All right, uh, let me give you just a couple of reminders to give a couple of shout outs. Uh, if you have not, uh, in your bulletin, uh, there's a uh, for the remind app so that you can stay connected with announcements and then also uh, prayer requests. Uh, be sure and uh, text that number uh, and then there is a code you need to enter uh, that you should text. So hit the, the number is the, is the is the address if you will. And then that, that phrasing down there, that little word at, I can't remember what it is right off the top of my head, that needs to be the text that you send so that you can link up with the Remind, uh, with the Remind app. And hopefully uh, you can do that, uh, that way you can stay connected. We'll be back here this week, and so we'd love to help you get connected if you are not so. Uh, and so make sure uh, that you bring your cell phones uh, to, uh, to church uh, Sunday so we can get, the, get you squared away and get you connected in that way and look forward to that. Uh, and then let me say this uh, also, uh, there's uh, go and check out our website and uh, our church website, uh, and then uh, if uh, for online giving, and I don't normally do this on Power Up, but just want to remind people of that. Uh, if you'd love to give financially to the church, uh, you can visit the tithe.ly app, Tithely, uh, and uh, search for the church's name and you can give uh, online to the church that way. Uh, and uh, would encourage you to always participate in the tithes and offerings of the church, okay? Thank you for being on today. If you have not hit that share button, be sure and do so. Let me greet those who are watching live. Uh, Ingrid, good morning to you. Uh, have a great day. Love you. Uh, Mom, thank you for being on as well. Uh, Lee and Angie, good morning to you. Uh, hope, hope you guys had a good weekend. Uh, and thank you for all you do for the ministry. Gene, good morning to you. Have a blessed day as well. Cliff and Karen, uh, good morning to you both. Hope you guys had a wonderful weekend and look forward to reconnecting with you all when we get back. Charlie and Marsha, good morning to you. Hope you guys have a great day as well. And I miss seeing you guys and look forward to, to seeing you guys when we get back. Uh, as well. And then David, good morning to you. Hope you have a great day. All right, stay safe. Those of you watching from Michigan, got some snow coming down. Uh, they said sometime today, uh, and we're praying for you all. Uh, listen, if you've got uh, if you got a prayer request that you'd like me to share, 
uh, be sure and uh, you can text me and I'll get that out on the app uh, so that uh, so that others can be in prayer for for you and your request. All right. Have a great day, everybody. The Lord's willing, we'll touch base again uh, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, let's honor the Lord in all that we say and all that we do. Have a wonderful day.